Well, three months is a long time, so uh, don't drive each other mad. Anyway, good luck. Seven five. Seven five. I'll sure miss them, Doc. Oh, they'll be back in no time at all. By the time you've started the new fitness regime I've got planned for you, you not even know they gone. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, remember, we've our part of the survey to do, too. We uh, don't want them to think we've been slacking. <laughs> and on that note, I'll uh, get us set for our next landing. You can't escape that easily, even in space. Fitness first. <laughs> Commander Neptune, we are approaching the planet Ultralarium. 7-5, Circa. Take us into orbit, and then initiate landing procedure. 7-5. A year of not finding anywhere inhabitable. And this will be the third planet we've been able to land on within weeks. And they've all had something in common. Uh, you mean they've all been hideously uninviting? Yep. It certainly makes you appreciate the Earth more. Well, I imagine the first woman on Mars thought much the same thing. But now look, a thriving colony. Of sealed domes and artificial sunlight. No, sir. Give me the good old U.S. of A. any time. On there speaks a man who has never been to somewhere really good, like Germany. <laughs> I suspect this will be more like the desert, uninhabited. We are now ready for landing. Okay, Circuit, take us down. Yes, sir. Oh, and Circuit, make it a gentle one. The last time was a bit bumpy. One gentle landing. Coming up, sir. You know, I'm sure he's developing more, uh, personality. Servo and not the other, I guess. Hey, Circuit, I said gentle. Cannot comply. Hey, you see what I mean, Doc? More personality. Systems not responding correctly. We are on a collision course. Collision course? <laughs> Abort landing! Abort landing! Systems are not responding. Full thrust circuit! Full thrust! Circuit, you've got to get the systems under control. Doc, what can we do? I have no idea! We seem to have lost the ability to override the engines. 
been packed with planet's surface in 37 seconds. It's too late for the escape pods. I guess this is it, Doc. Get down, Doc. Activate! Intruder! Intruder! Initiate defense protocol! Halt! There is no need to harm me. I am your friend. <laughs> More, more, more power to the engines. The ship. Dr. Asteroid. Uh, Herman, are you okay? Doctor. Now that you understand my situation, you will help me. Negative. Oh, but you will. You have no choice. You will have no authority to issue instructions. Only Commander Neptune and Nebula 75 crew have authority. Sometimes. What's this? You mean this ship of yours has a crew? Why was I not informed? Guards! Guards! Guards. Report, Report to me! To me. Immediately! Immediately. What do you intend to do? I want these people brought to me forthwith. You will not harm them. Command 745 Oblique 8. Stop. <laughs> you really cannot stop me. Return to crash site and bring all survivors to me. Oh, and have this lump of scrap taken to the caves. I shall reprogram him later. You sure had me worried there, Doc. I'll, uh, I'll be okay in a moment anyway. But that's more than can be said for the Nebula 75. Oh, thank goodness the lieutenants weren't here. Yes. Though it may just be prolonging the inevitable for them. The comet isn't designed for long-term survival in space. So they're potentially in just as much danger as we are. And they just don't know it. Mm -hmm, quite. Well, ignorance is bliss, I guess. Is there anything we can do? Well, I've not seen the rest of the ship yet. But I can't see this being put right outside of the Zodiac Space Center herself. So, uh, it's all over for us? Well, let's see what's afoot. Normally I'd say panic. But recently I've learned that it's not over until the Space Maiden, or indeed the, um, well, portly doctor, sings. Let's investigate.
Now I wonder what's taking them so long. Hmm. Well, dead or alive, it couldn't be more perfect. It's a pretty fine mess, isn't it, Doc? Uh, any sign of circuit? I'm afraid not. But there's so much wreckage, it could be anywhere. The command room was reinforced. And even that's a write-off. Is there any way out of this, Doc? Well, as far as I can see, no. If you want the straight answer. Well, I guess we might as well still investigate. Even if it is only to find somewhere to shelter. Ah, uh, one moment, Commander. Oh, come on, Doc. We better get a move on. Who knows what kind of nights this planet has in store for us. Agreed. So, let's not walk. Hey, the meteor! How on earth is she still in one piece? Oh, she's not to reason by, Ray. Oh, she's but to do or... Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes. Well, um, hop in. Well, if you're sure there's nobody there, then you had better head back. Well, I suppose it was quite a smash. It's unlikely to have left survivors. On the other hand, I wonder where they could be. I wonder where we could be. What? I was just wondering where we are on the planet. All our instrumentation was smashed, so I'm a bit lost. Look, Doc, any chance you could slow down so I could hear you? What? I said, could you slow down? It's too loud. I'm afraid it's no good, Commander. You'll have to wait until we stopped. It's too loud. The remains of spaceships. Say, isn't that the Hudson? One missing just before I was born. It vanished without a trace, but it's a long way from home out here. Its sister ship, the Bridges, is still in the museum on Earth. I don't recognize the other craft. I wonder what became of the crews. You know, our crash landing must somehow be tied up with these rockets. I agree. Oh, gee, I'm tired. Let's stop here for tonight. We've been through a lot, and if we're to have any hope of finding a way out of this mess, we'll need all the rest we can get. And something to eat. A fat chance of that around here, though. Well, I suppose we could have these. Oh, Doc, you can't share your last Solar Supremes. Those are your favorite. Welcome to the Ambassador's Reception, Commander. Come on, let's feast. And then, bed. Your crew appear to have vanished. I don't suppose you would have any theories as to where they may have gone. No current information on their whereabouts. You're an uncooperative fellow. Never mind, a servant cannot have two masters. And now, you will have a new one. Guards. Guards. Gods, prepare the operating table. Thank you. 
Commander! Commander, wake up! Oh, uh, leave it out, Doc. But it's important. So is sleep. Good night. Sleep later. Look at this! Okay, okay. What the? Now I understand what caused our crash landing. But why? Only one way to find out. Let's go. Hmm. The night skies are very quiet tonight. Well, hopefully no matter. Service robots report. How is the repair work going? Hello? What's this? Aha! There you are. Well, you're mine now. Mine. Mine. <laughs> My, my, you are resilient, aren't you? What happened? A miracle, I think. First you survive a crash landing, and then a rock fall. But still, you know what they say, eh? Third time's the charm. <laughs> Why do you want to kill us? My, you have a very high opinion of yourself, don't you? It's your ship I'm interested in, not you. I didn't even know you were aboard. But it was you who crashed the ship. And caused the rockfall. Well, it's true. You do have me there. But now you'll be wanting your ship back. And well, you can't. It's mine. All mine. And I know you won't let it go. So getting you out of the way is for the best. Don't you agree? What are you talking about? The Nebula 75 is in pieces. It's of no use to you. Or anyone. It's true that the paintwork has perhaps a scratch or two, but nothing too difficult for a genius like the great Professor Eugene Piston to overcome. Look. But what is this? A trick? No trick, my dear fellow. Tricks are so boring anyway. I've always preferred scientists to magicians. No, no. I had it rebuilt by some friends of mine. What friends? Well, see for yourself. Shake it! 
You're safe! Circuit? Oh, don't take it personally, my dear. I've reprogrammed him, and I must say, his specialist knowledge of your ship came in most useful. He helped you? Oh, yes. A most obliging fellow. Only too willing to assist. Do you really mean Circuit? If that's what you call him, then yes. Although I fail to understand why you gave him a name. Robots aren't people. They're empty vessels, devoid of soul, personality, or ingenuity. So, what now? Now? Well, I'll be off home. That'll be a surprise for them. What are you doing here, Piston, they shall ask. We thought we had marooned you for all eternity. Your work was too groundbreaking for our feeble morality to comprehend. Well, this is my home. My real home, I shall say. Then they will reply with something like, well, something like, but we banished you all those years ago and sent our robot guards to keep you there. Oh, yes. So you did. But I reprogrammed them, and they came to serve me. As I said, robots, they're empty souls. No loyalty to anyone. So you're going to take the Nebula 75 and leave us here? And then? And then the revenge. They'll pay for what they did. Forty years. Not that one notices days and nights here. It's all one long, tortuous evening, usually filled with disappointment, as another ship comes crashing into land with nothing to offer. Ah, a graveyard of ships. And that's where they belong. It took me years to build the Powertron with the scraps my jailers foolishly left behind, and all it brought me were ancient ships lost in space with no fuel. To imagine my delight, gentlemen, when I saw your titanium tetrafluorox protected isoranium engines. No detonation? Not a scratch? And now they will take me home. And what of us? I shall leave the planet in your ship, and then your robot will kill you. He wouldn't do that. I hope you're not a betting man, Commander. You've just lost your ship. I'd hate for you to lose your shirt, too. <laughs> oh, before I go, may I say what a pleasure it was having you visit. Give me ten minutes to get clear, then press the auto-destruct. I'd hate for these gentlemen to make use of my hard work. Affirmative. Be grateful you weren't born with robots, gentlemen. Enjoy the pleasures of imagination. For the few precious minutes left to you. Cheerio. <laughs> Circuit, don't do it. Come on. Open the door and let's go. Negative. Circuit, we are your friends. Let us go. Negative. Well, I guess that's it, Doc. And where would we go anyway? Piston has the Nebula 75. It's all over. I shall leave now, and you will stay here. I have no intention of spending another minute with cast-offs from a scrapyard. You can stay here to rust. Okay, Doc. It looks like it's over anyway. I'm going to rush him. Circuit? You don't stand a chance. Professor Piston to Robot 
1220. You may destroy everything. Sergeant, no! Nothing happened. Negative. Something happened. What happened? What? What's happening? Stop this! Let me down! What have you done? Yes, Shackett. What have you done? Ouch! Stop, please! I rewired the controls to operate the Nebula 75 remotely. Now that Professor Piston is in orbit, I have deactivated the artificial gravity controls. But he said he had reprogrammed you. I pretended. He believed it. He is devoid of soul, personality, or ingenuity. Let me down! Let me down! Well, I guess we'd better bring him back to Earth. Professor Piston is starting to sound like Professor. Help! I shall set the re-entry controls for tomorrow. Well, I guess we shouldn't argue, eh, hey, Doc? And I suppose the professor will be less of a threat then. In the meantime, I'm famished. Have you got any more Solar Supremes? I demand you stop. Don't you know who I am? Leave! Let me down! Let me down, I say! Help me, my robot friend! Let me down! Him on each night and day. It's such a thrill to hear him say, This isn't amusing. Let me down, I say. He came to me from outer space. He's got the most peculiar face. He always rattles when he walks and kind of echoes when he talks. Bring me back. A heart. And if I take this guy to church, he'll never leave me in the lurch. The perfect lover I adore to say to me forevermore. Eugene Piston will triumph. Help me, my robot friends. Robot. 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 